guys, here is a little help on how to use your regulator and get the most out of it, especially when uh, using your CO2 tank. So when you receive your CO2 tank, it's typically empty if you order it from us. Um, now what you're also gonna get is your regulator. So the first thing that I want you to do before you even attach it is, uh, this is off, so you first wanna make sure that it's off. And I'm just unscrewing it so that I can show you uh, the proper ways to get everything set up so you can avoid leaks. So when you first get your regulator, you want to make sure that you take plumber's tape and you wrap the threading of your CO2 tank right here because this is filled of CO, full, of, full of CO2 and it tends to get really cool so you want to avoid any rusting around the threading of your actual CO2 tank. Inside of your regulator, we put um, a washer. This is a, I believe, a quarter inch washer. You want to make sure that you have it in there. Um, it comes inside with your regulator, but you want to make sure that you stick it in there prior to putting it on your uh, CO2 tank so that you can make sure that you get a nice tight seal. So then once you have your washer inside of there and you put plumber's tape around there, you're just going to screw it on. And you don't even really need a wrench to tell you the truth unless it's absolutely wobbling. You want to make sure you get a nice tight fit. So once it's on and it's not shaking around, there is an open and close um, uh, button right here. It's a knob right here. You want to make sure that it's all the way closed because if it's all the way open, the entire valve is going to start spewing CO2 if you open this up. So you want to make sure that that's all the way closed. So once it's all the way closed, you can go ahead and you can turn on your CO2 tank. So you're testing it first to make sure that air is not spewing everywhere. This piece right here is called the male, uh, the female piece. It is a quick disconnect. So when you get your hose that comes with your CO2 tank, one end should have a quarter inch fitting and one end should have a male quick disconnect on it. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to first turn it off once you know that there's no leaks. And then you're going to take your male piece you're going to take the female piece and you're going to pick it up on both sides. You have to kind of pull it back from this point. You take your male piece and then you kind of snap it back into place, okay? So you have to pick up the sides, push it in there. Sometimes it requires a little bit of force and then you wanna make sure that it's nice and secure inside of here. I also wrap all of my threadings with, with plumber's tape as well to ensure a nice uh, smooth uh, fit. So then once you have it connected, you can take the other end um, and you can connect that to a manifold. There's typically another uh, male piece on this end that you can put it directly into a manifold. Or you can take this male piece and connect it to a different hose to just hook up to one gun. This is too big to fit on the end of an Iwata Eclipse. This is going to be a quarter inch fitting, better to fit into a manifold. So once you have it all set up, I am going to put my finger over this so that you that the air doesn't go spewing everywhere. And once you open it, then you can hear it because I don't have it connected to anything. But you don't want to hear air leaking from here. So this needs to fit directly into it. So the piece is, I'm going to turn it off now. So the piece that you have to make sure that you have is this male piece and that you want it to fit securely inside of here. And then the hose that you're using, you either want to connect it to your other airbrushes, a manifold, or you want to switch over to a different hose that's going to allow you to hook one end to your air source and one end to your airbrush. If you have any more questions, just give me a call. I am always happy to help.